There's one thing every human on this planet can agree with. It's that farting is hilarious. So let's try to get through these next few minutes without laughing and giggling too much. So of all the foods you eat, carbohydrates, proteins, and fat, the vast majority of your gas actually comes from the carbohydrates. It's not the protein or the eggs, and even though it may smell like that, that's not usually the cause of why you're farting. So if we break down carbohydrates, there's three main types, sugars, starches, and fibers, and I've explained these in detail in other videos. But here's what typically happens. You have your stomach, that feeds into your small intestines, those feed into your large intestines, which are called your colon, and then it goes out your rectum. Okay, well what usually happens is you've got enzymes that are in all three of those areas and mostly in the small intestines that are able to break down food. If things are uh, digested there, you have no real issues. And so most of your sugars and starches are easily digested in the small intestine, it gets quickly in the bloodstream, and you're off easy peasy. However, there are some types of sugars that we don't have the enzymes in our small intestine for. And so those actually trans for all the way through to the large intestine and they're not, haven't been digested or broken down yet because they require a different enzyme. And so those have to be rapidly fermented in the larger intestine. Well, actually the only way we do that is since humans don't have those enzymes, we have to use another species and those are gut bacteria. So the gut bacteria have the enzymes necessary to break these things down. Well, as a byproduct of those things metabolizing the food, they kick out what are called short chain fatty acids and as you guessed it, a little bit of gas. So anytime we're really talking about digestion happening in the lower intestine versus the smaller intestine, that's typically where our gas is coming from. Now those types of sugars that require that are generally categories, categorized and called FODMAPs. Okay. So any sugars or starches, and a good example is rice, that, that can be digested in the small intestine are not going to give you gas. So if you just look for this type of starches that are more digest it there, you're going to be fine. Okay, now your FODMAPs are what are called rapidly fermentable oligodi and monosaccharides as well as a thing called polyols. Now polyols are what we'd also, the moment we care about the most are, are called sugar alcohols and those are probably the ones that are responsible for the protein bar farts if you've ever had that. It's not the protein in there. And of the FODMAPs, probably raffinose is by far our biggest uh, problem area and that's because it's in high concentrations in beans, cabbage, broccoli, asparagus, etc. Okay, so <clears throat> another part of starch that's uh, typically an offender of gas are called uh, resistant starches. And so these are similar idea. They're not rapidly fermented, so they're not FODMATs, but they're slowly fermented in, in the larger intestine. Going to cause you the same particular problems. And then fiber as well. So any other rapid or slow uh, ferment that needs to be rapidly or slowly fermented in larger intestines is going to count for that problem as well. And then of fiber, there are, uh, there's a final category that are what we often call NSPs or non-starchy polysaccharides that are just simply never digested at all. And those actually make it through the entire part of the body, like cellulose, pectin, etc. cetera. And, and they're never actually broken down. So while these foods are uh, commonly resulting in gas, you don't necessarily want to get rid of them. As you can see here, they have a number of very important health benefits like keeping your colon healthy uh, and keeping you cancer free or reducing your cancer risk. They can help you regulate blood cholesterol, blood glucose, and a bunch of other things important to your health. And while eliminating them may reduce your, say, gaseous emissions, uh, they don't necessarily cause, unless we don't have any scientific evidence to suggest they cause things like irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, or, or gut inflammation. So don't conflate those two. Uh, we see this misappropriated a lot on the internet with gurus and things like that. They don't really understand this. Um, they don't cause inflammation. They're, they're sim simply a, a symptom or a sign. So don't worry about these things giving you that. Um, other really common causes of GI issues is, you know, it's too many carbohydrates at once, um, too much of an increase in these FODMAPs, resistant starches, fibers, or NSPs. So it's not that they cause it, but you just go from too little to too many too quickly, so progress slower. You could have some innate sensitivity or allergy to something that you're eating, uh, like gluten, dairy, something like that. Could have some stomach issues, or uh, you could even have what's called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So the bacteria is supposed to be in your large intestine, gets in your small intestine, and you can see why that's particularly a problem. Okay, if you want to see me go into detail of all these things more, and how those ones that are circled in red actually cause an auto-inflammatory, or autoimmune response, rather, 
You also want to see more about these recommendations. So typically we're going to say you have about 14 to 16 grams of fiber total in your diet per thousand calories you eat. So if you eat 2,000, double that, 3,000, triple that. Uh, more specifically, the different types of fiber, soluble versus insoluble, how to get these in different foods, as well as uh, solutions for this. You're going to have to watch the larger 55 minute video. So one thing, things you can explore are, are strategies involving increasing your pre and probiotics, whether that's supplementation or food, or just simply taking digestive enzymes. If we know that's the, the issue and we can get some of these digestive enzymes into our stomach or potentially small intestines, that may help. But as you'll see in the other video, there's a whole host of problems uh, with these strategies. And so just to tease that larger video one more time, this is a list of the 22 different things that I cover in that video in addition to this, but you can read them here. So if, if you wanna see these answers and these topics, watch that other one. If not, hopefully this explains you a little bit about why you fart so much. Now, maybe if you want, I'll make a separate video explaining why they smell so bad. Enjoy.